I'm Dr. Shilling. So I want to see Sandosh. Okay. Yeah. Ah, Sandosh. Hi. Mm. Doctor. Remember yeah. or not? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Many people think of people with intellectual disability as children. Yeah, but they forget that they actually grow up into adults. They grow old. Their caregivers, their parents, you know, grow older and pass on and often before their adult child with intellectual disability actually passes on. And I think uh, therein lies the real challenge actually of uh, supporting this particular group. How is that actually going to work? So like how has the advocacy like, mm. work been going mm. and mm. you know some of these conversations that you're having even with government agencies trying yeah. to eventually get them to adopt the work, right? Yeah. 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 How's that been going? Um, I mean, I would say that it's been a... Of course, there's always there's been a huge challenge. We're talking about 1-3% to 3 of the population having intellectual disability and their families. We're talking about 180 to 240,000 people requiring support. There is uh, plenty more, I think, that we really need to work on yeah, to scale, to find a way to be able to build capability and to influence other people to do this mm -hmm. so that it's beyond ourselves. Singapore is a wealthy nation and even though we are wealthy, the needs are still there. And I think what we're seeing right now is that the needs are growing. Um, the pie is uh, not necessarily growing alongside. And so this is a space that philanthropic organisations can really step into. When it comes to philanthropy, a lot of times we don't spend enough time uh, up, upstream actually just listening to the different voices. Philanthropy is less of a product that you sell and more of a learning process that different members of the community come together uh, to participate in. I think asking questions is the start actually of the giving journey. It's a responsibility in each and every one of us. Like, so it doesn't matter whether you're rich or you're poor, you know, but if you ask questions and you identify gaps and hopefully you know, having a community where you can brainstorm and think about how things can be done better and then being able to work together with the philanthropists as well to help fund off some of these ideas to help these solutions scale. designed this as a place for us to be able to have honest conversations, discuss trends, discuss the challenges and maybe creative solutions that, that we can learn from people all around the world. Philanthropy helps the sector by providing a conducive environment for growth. And I'm glad to see the efforts that philanthropic organisations like the Majority Trust have made towards building the ecosystem and investing in capacity building so that non-profit startups can continue to innovate sustainably. One of the key things when we look at philanthropy in, in Singapore in particular, uh, we see a need from philanthropists, from donors to say, hey, I want to know the impact, I want to know the evidence, I want to know what research is telling us. And we find that the majority trust, that's a role that we can play. To be able to surface through research, through our groundwork with our grantee partners, to understand what the needs are on the ground, and then to bring to donors and say, hey, you're interested in this area. Have you thought about this particular need within this area, the unseen needs, the things that requires a little bit more investment up front, uh, one that supports maybe smaller charities, uh, even ground-up initiatives, unregistered groups, they are doing really interesting work, very innovative work. So guys, like there was a film screening recently at the TMT office, like not, not couple of one, but two. Oh uh, wow! Two <laughs> screenings, it's, it's actually part of this entire volunteer training process that we've been running it in part for this new batch of volunteers. But you were saying that like kind of the volunteer training has been revamped or, you know, um, were there like some struggles initially with like training volunteers that were youth facing? So I, I think a lot of our training uh, is, was online at first, mm -hmm. right? Because that was uh, predominantly during the COVID. Uh, but I feel like uh, it didn't prepare them enough or sufficiently uh, to face the kind of population that we are working with. So it's cool to see that you actually put volunteers kind of at, like right at the heart of what you do. 
Today we are here at the, the finale of our Youth Advocate Training. This training is really crucial for us to prepare our volunteers to go out there to journey with young people who are facing psychological adversities. There's a, a lot of young people out there in significant mental health crisis, significant life crisis. Many of these young people do not want a psychologist, they do not want to see a, a counsellor. So what we are trying to really do here is that we are trying to provide an ecosystem of care so that they can uh, feel feel safe and uh, receive treatment, it is a difficult process. People from all walks of life have come together to help others at a time when it is tempting to just look out for oneself. In another example, the Maturity Trust, a charity, is raising $500,000 under the Singapore Strong Fund to fund ground-up projects that help the community stay strong amid the COVID-19 outbreak. How we respond to moments of challenge and crisis is a test of our individual resilience and the strength of our character. So the GIC and the Majority Trust Partnership actually started when the pandemic hit Singapore. We made a donation to the SG Strong Fund. In addition to this top-down donation, we actually contributed many projects bottom-up. There was a call to the staff to say, oh, if you wish to participate, just send in your projects, right? So TMT, they really tried to support our employees' strong sense of giving and really wanted to encourage that kind of ground up um, contributions. So even now with our With Love GIC, which is our key staff and volunteering platform, it's actually very tied to ground ups. So based on a network that uh, TMT has curated for us, our staff get to volunteer with these ground ups and support their fundraising efforts. I've been in this sector for many years and in fact, often on the other side of the line, you know, seeking funding, seeking support. So when I saw what Majority Trust was doing, uh, it got me excited, the basis of which TMT was founded on. Founded on change, innovation, finding new ways of, of breaking through in this sector that no one has done before. So at TMT, we look at addressing unseen gaps in the community it's in two ways. So we think of social gaps as well as we think of sector gaps. The first principle of our grant making approach, if we think about donations that we raise, um, we want to ensure that we are able to deploy the resources given to us by our donors in a timely as well as an effective way. We set ourselves a target that within 12 months of raising the donation, we want to commit 100% of the funds to be able to support immediate critical needs on the ground. This is important because we don't want to be in a situation where we raise more than what we need. This means that we do not save our money because if we have not scoped the demand on the ground well enough, maybe the money is better off somewhere else. So one of the things most people look at before they give money to is how many more months can you survive, right? And that is not a wrong thing to do. TMT helped us to understand that that's not the only uh, factor, right? It is how they use the money. What is the actual impact? It's much more than uh, just giving money. I think we want to get an update on the Silver Voices program. The issue now is with the ratio. So of course when we were writing the grant, uh, the ideal number would be 100 and then we have a 50-50 mix of like dementia and non-dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we realise that it's a bit harder to get the dementia, uh, s seniors with dementia over to our spaces. Yeah, so I think that, that ratio might, might have to change a little based on the situation. I'm not sure how that's possible. Uh, I mean, what we can do on TMT side is I can link it up with our other grantee partners as well as uh, even our non-grantee partners. We do have some uh, networks in like the Dementia Co Collapse Network and things like that. I think it would be useful. A lot of the time, art making in Singapore is really uh, like a journey into the unknown. So I think you know it's really important that art making is supported by a fund like Majority that helps us to be flexible with how resources are used in this program. And the Silver Voices is one of the very special ensembles and groups that we are starting at Voices of Singapore that we hope 
will grow into something much bigger that will ignite a conversation that singing can be used as a medium to also delay the onset of dementia and to promote that lifelong learning. There's an old saying about society grows strong when old men plant trees under whose shade uh, they will never sit. So one of the things that philanthropic organisations uh, will need to do increasingly is to take the long view. Investing for the medium to long term is where the impact can really be felt. At the end of the day, you know, really the most effective philanthropy is not the give and go away. We always come back to this question, what is it that we can do together that we all feel must be done that none of us can do alone? For us at the Majority Trust, it's about building thriving communities. How do we help people, regardless of status or stage in life, thrive wherever they are? It's about thinking long term. It's about being able to, to reach out to the unseen needs and the unmet needs in Singapore. In each of the funds that we have, we try to find one unseen and unmet needs that we can rally resources around. Because that's how we feel we can play in a much larger ecosystem uh, where we can actually plug in and actually play our part in surfacing things that people actually don't see, uh, smaller organisations people don't know. That's the role that we see us playing at the Majority Trust.